Coming up on Citrus TV News, students are gearing up to dance all night long. Citrus TV reporter Sabrina Majori is here with what to expect from this year's Autothon. We're about to begin a long trip. I know some of you are coming with us. We look forward to it. And President Trump begins his tour around Asia. What policies he'll be pushing? It's been cold and rainy all week in Syracuse, but will there be a break in the clouds this weekend? Find out in my full weather forecast. Your campus news leader, Citrus TV, starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. ISIS is claiming responsibility for the terrorist attack in Manhattan. This comes as thousands of runners are preparing for the New York City Marathon. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Castor. And I'm Josh Rosenblatt. More than 50,000 people will run on Sunday, and officials are expecting as many 2.5 million spectators to cheer them on. While the marathon will go on as planned, police are stepping up security. NYPD says it will deploy a record number of sand trucks and police vehicles to secure the 26.2 mile course. Police have also doubled the number of rooftop sniper teams and there will be more heavy weapons teams and police dogs patrolling the city. Eight people were killed and 12 injured on Tuesday when a man drove a truck down a bikeway, making it NYC's deadliest terrorist attack since 9-11. As you can see here, member, here, community members created memorials for the victims. Police are placing hundreds of concrete barriers along that bikeway to keep cars from merging into the path. And they will put up more barriers along other streets and intersections throughout the city in an effort to prevent similar attacks from happening. Autothon is this Sunday in Goldstein Auditorium. Citrus TV reporter Sabrina Majori tells us about their latest fundraising goal. Thanks guys. I spoke to some members of the Autothon Executive Board who say they're ready to get their groove on for a good cause. For the kids. Well, for those kids. For the kids. For the kids. That's Autothon's motto. That's why we dance, who we're dancing for, just everything revolves around the kids. Autothon is one of over 300 Miracle Dance Marathons held on college campuses across the United States. This time around, after four consecutive autothons here at SU, members of the executive board set an ambitious goal to fundraise $144,000. 144, 44, bringing in cues to it, so we hope to hit that on Sunday. The money raised for the event will benefit children at Upstate Golisano Hospital. Every year goes something different. This year it's going towards general allocations, uh, most likely, which means that the hospital will get to see where that money is most needed and place it there. Becoming a dancer at the 12-hour marathon means registering and committing to fundraising for the event. While there, dancers are expected to remain on their feet, play games, and interact with the children. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful event. And for those children and patients who are literally two blocks away, I don't think there's anything better that I could be a part of. Seeing their smiling faces and meeting and hearing about these kids that have heard about Autothon and what we do, it just, it makes you feel really good. Students can register for the Dance Marathon up until the day of by visiting autothon.com. Thanks, Sabrina. Women hold a small number of elected offices in the U.S. To help change that, the Women's Leadership Initiative is hosting a workshop tomorrow. It's called Elect Her, Campus Woman Win, and it's a chance for female students to get advice on running for public office or student government. SA Vice President Angie Patty is the keynote speaker. Also on campus, more and more companies are hiring SU students to represent their brands. Citrus TV reporter Anna Azalian has more about these brand ambassadors. Anna? Thanks, Josh. All over campus, students are representing their favorite brands at SU. There are student ambassadors and reps for everything from Pandora jewelry to Bud Light. I talked with some of the brand reps on campus to find out what it is they do. Many companies have hired students to promote their brands on college campuses across the country. The brand ambassadors on campus work to gain exposure for their respective brands. We're constantly posting on social media, um, wearing our clothes, hanging out with our friends, just kind of like everyday stuff. Um, we table in Shine, so we did that three times. And we also met with eight different clubs each, me and my partner. While these brand reps work with student organizations, they aren't themselves considered a student organization at SU. 
It's definitely harder to be not a student organization and to be a brand rep and to want to immerse yourself in the uh, culture of the school because Syracuse just put up some roadblocks to that, which is, which is understandable, but we managed to work around them. Through tabling and shine with student organizations, the L.L. Bean reps found a way to work around the roadblocks. So for tabling, you have to be a registered student organization. Um, so what we did is I went through my sorority and L.L. Bean actually donated a uh, gift basket for our philanthropy for us to um, give away as like a raffle in order for um, my chapter to let us kind of use our name and, and table under there as like a mm -hmm. give and take. One thing that sets these brand reps apart from most student organizations on campus is the fact that they get paid. I think people forget sometimes that it is a job. So while it is so much fun to do um, as a brand rep on campus, you still kind of have to like clock in, do a lot of admin work. Many brands have partnered with marketing agencies to make these brand ambassador jobs possible. I think every brand realizes that in order to get millennials to participate, they have to engage them on a personal level. So I think the best way for them to do that is through student to student outreach. Ambassadors for many brands are all over campus, often offering stickers and coupons. Keep an eye out for them in Shine and on Marshall Street, and you might just score a coupon from your favorite brand. Thanks, Anna. The holiday season is upon us. Volunteers delivered the Clinton Square Christmas tree this morning. The 60-foot tree came from Cicero North Syracuse High School. It was cut and delivered this morning so community members can decorate it for the city's annual Home for the Holiday celebration. Police are closing South Salina Street between West Genesee and Washington Street until the tree is completely installed. Big names are backing Juanita Perez-Williams. Governor Cuomo and Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul endorsed Perez-Williams for mayor today in Syracuse. Perez-Williams worked for Cuomo when he was the acting attorney general. Voters go to the polls on Tuesday to elect a new mayor. A horrifying incident out of Oswego County. Police arrested two brothers and charged them for a hate crime. Accused of taunting and assaulting a 19-year-old transgender woman on Wednesday. Police say she was riding a bike along State Route 3 when Shane Thomas and Cody Thomas stopped their car and attacked her shortly after. Police say the brothers attacked her again. Investigators say the brothers were shouting homophobic slurs at her for several weeks. It's been raining all week in Syracuse. How long will it last? Let's check in with David Edelstein. Yeah, that's right, it's been a little bit rainy outside, but right now outside here in Syracuse, 49 degrees. The sun is now officially setting before the show starts, 5.54 p.m., so the moon is starting to come out. As we take a look at the temperatures around the area right now in Syracuse, 49 degrees, kind of in the high 40s, low 50s in the area. Rochester, still a little sunny out. Their sunset is actually a little bit later than it is here in Syracuse, so they still have a little bit of sunlight. As we take a look, the winds are getting pretty heavy. They're coming right off the lake and going through the Syracuse area towards the southeast. We'll take a look more at why this is happening later in the broadcast. A military judge has decided if the U.S. Army sergeant who walked off his post in Afghanistan will serve prison time. Stay tuned to find out President Trump's reaction. And President Trump is embarking on his most crucial foreign trip yet. Find out what his plans are for his 12 days in Asia. Stay with us. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.
some superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. You're watching Citrus TV News with Rebecca Castor, Josh Rosenblatt, and David Edelstein with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. Welcome back. The U.S. Army sergeant who walked off his post in Afghanistan will serve no prison time. A military judge has ruled today. The judge also gave Bo Bergdahl a dishonorable discharge and demoted him to private. Bergdahl pleaded guilty last month to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. The Taliban captured and held him for five years. His disappearance set off search missions by service members. Many were wounded. President Trump is disappointed in the judge's ruling, calling it a disgrace to our country and our military. As the FBI investigation into President Trump's election campaign develops, Trump is turning his focus to Asia. Trump announced today that he's extending his original 12-day trip so he can attend the East Asia Summit in the Philippines. Trump is expected to visit five Asian countries, and this is Trump's most crucial foreign trip yet. He hopes to build international support to denuclearize North Korea. He'll also push for free trade policies throughout the region. The University of Notre Dame is canceling birth control coverage for students and employees starting next year. In the past, Obamacare required insurance plans to cover female contraception without charging a copay. Now the university will take advantage of the Trump administration's rules, which lets them opt out of this because of religious or moral beliefs. Employees will lose benefits at the start of 2018, while students will lose it at the end of the school year. The man accused of shooting and killing three people inside a Walmart near Denver is in court today. 47-year-old Scott Estrem is accused of fatally shooting two men and a woman Wednesday evening. Police say they used surveillance footage to identify Ostrem as a shooter and arrested him yesterday after a brief car chase. Prosecutors will charge Ostrem on Monday and police have not determined a motive, but they say the incident is not related to terrorism. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Now let's go to David Edelstein with your full weather forecast. Thanks, Rebecca. We're taking a look here at our weather radar, and as we can see, some clouds are just moving across the Syracuse region. There are a little bit of spots of green right here. That's just a little bit of rain, possibility for some drizzles in the area. Talking about the winds a few minutes ago, let's see why that's happening. We see this blue line right here going from Boston all the way down through the United States. That blue line is a cold front, and as that passes by, some colder air is wedging itself down under warmer air, causing a lot of wind as the temperature changes, also bringing in clouds and thunderstorms, rain, and possibly even some hail. But tomorrow when you wake up, it will be pretty sunny outside. 36 degrees, though, the coldest it's been in a while. Visibility will be fine. The sunrise is inching towards 8 a.m. as we get closer to daylight savings. Now, as we take a look at throughout the day tomorrow, the high will go up to 50. Then it will be a low of 41. It is turning breezy, and those clouds are being pushed in by the wind. As we take a look throughout the day, 33 degrees if you wake up early. 12 p.m., it's going to be 44. The high of 50 is at 4 p.m. At 8 p.m., it's 43 degrees, becoming overcast. Now, as we take a look at our five-day forecast, it will be warm tomorrow and sunny. Rainy throughout Sunday and Monday is getting a little bit warmer here at 62 degrees on Sunday. And then as we get toward the end of the week, the temperatures are dropping. We are seeing some lows, especially midweek next week at 28 degrees. So, David, that rain tonight, any chance that's going to turn into snow at all? You know, as we get throughout the weekend, the temperatures do drop. It is possible. Mainly, though, what we could see, it's, it could, because it's still too warm out, we could see some colder temperatures higher in the atmosphere, forming some ice pellets as the rain does fall, and that mm. could result in some hail, but not any snowstorms in the forecast for the coming days. Yeah, it's a little unusual we haven't seen snow yet, but thanks for letting us know. So, Americans are stressed out over the country's future. We'll tell you how they're dealing with the tension. Plus, Citrus TV reporter Noah Eagle visits a library that is teaching children about different cultural celebrations during the holiday season. Stay tuned. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. 
and my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. The U.S. economy is making a comeback after a hurricane-filled September. The month of October brought more than 250,000 new jobs. That extends the largest job growth streak in our country's recorded history. Unemployment also fell to 4.1 percent, the lowest since 2010. Despite all the good news, wages, however, grew at a slower rate than usual. The results from a stress survey may surprise you. The American Psychological Association released their annual Stress in America survey. It states two-thirds of Americans are more stressed about the future of the country than their work or finances. But, however, the report found most people use that stress in a positive way, such as volunteering for causes they believe in. And here in Syracuse, nearly 10% of the city's population is Hispanic or Latino. However, more people celebrate Halloween than Dia de los Muertos in the local Latino community. Citrus TV's Noah Eagle tells us how one librarian is trying to make that a thing of the past. Monday Branch Library on South Getty Street looks just like any normal library. Books, computers, a large staff, but there's something this place has that others don't. Librarian Maggie Foster, who's dedicated to educating her community about their culture. We do have a large Latino population from um, Puerto Rico, a few uh, from Cuba, Dominican Republic. So we spend the month of um, September 15th to October 15th celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And that culminated to the turn of the month. November 1st marked the first day of Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, a very important holiday in Latino culture, particularly in Mexico. Foster set up cookie making and coloring stations for young kids to learn about the traditions of the day. And she said she had this one planned for a while for specific reasons. Uh, we've unfortunately had two huge tragedies for the Monday Branch community over the last six months. And I wanted to do something that would kind of show a little bit of appreciation for those that we've lost and those that are still living. So overall, a fun day planned here. A lot of arts and crafts, even some cookie making. But don't think this is the only thing that happens right here at the library. Foster said that once you get in between these walls, it's a safe space for anyone in the community. She's proud that Monday Branch has a greater meaning to it than the words on the front of the building. It, kind of creating something that's more than just books. So they come in, we have many of them here all the time. One of our regulars, Jada, is here for lots and lots of programs. And she actually is going to get to the point where she'll probably end up helping at many of those programs because she's been doing them for so long. At the end of the day, it all goes back to instilling life lessons in these kids. The programs Foster has created over the years continue to make the youngsters want to come back for more. My idea behind doing this programming is I'm giving you this before you're even asking. Like, what is Day of the Dead? It's like, well, here you go. This is, this is kind of as close as we can get to it. Noah Eagle, Citrus TV News. Foster and Monday Branch have more celebrations planned in the coming months, including a joint celebration of Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. The iPhone 10 is finally on sale. People all over the world lined up to buy the phone, sleeping outside just to get their hands on the new Apple product. But three people in San Francisco didn't feel like waiting in line. Three thieves broke into a UPS truck at a mall and stole hundreds of iPhone 10s. Police are still looking for the suspects. 
And another popular product hit shelves this week, Lego's new Woman in NASA playset sold out in just 24 hours and became Amazon's number one best-selling toy. The Legos represent four women who played major roles in the U.S. space program. NASA hopes that the set will show how women are a key part of NASA's history. Coming up, it's back to work for the SU football team as they head for warmer weather and a date with Florida State. Plus, women's ice hockey and volleyball also in action. We'll have a full weekend preview on the other side of the break. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. <sighs> Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome to sports. I'm Nick Dugan. After a bye week, Syracuse football is back in action tomorrow against Florida State. Tallahassee has been unkind to the Orange over the years. The program is 0-4 in its history against the Seminoles on the road in those contests. SU has lost by an average of 34 points per game. But after losing their Heisman hopeful quarterback DeAndre Francois in the season opener, FSU has put up a 2-5 and five record, ranks last in the ACC in total offense, and has yet to get a win at Doak Campbell Stadium. But for SU quarterback Eric Dungy, that record is just a number. I mean, to see 2-5, and five, but I mean, in no way in shape or form am I thinking this is an easy game. I mean, yeah, uh, they lost their quarterback, but they still have everybody on the same defense, special teams and all that. They just lost one guy, but I don't play defense, so um, that's not going to affect me. So Florida State still has the same athletes on defense, and they're a veteran team. they got a lot of old players on that team. They've been there, and, you know, they're, they're, they're angry, and they're, uh, they're coming for uh, vengeance. So, I mean, um, really got to step it up this game. And remember to turn to channel 14.1 to catch Orange Press Pass after Saturday's matchup between the Orange and the Seminoles. Our team will have highlights, analysis, and our very own Chris Thompson will have a live report from Tallahassee. It all comes your way at 5.30. And how about SU women's volleyball? With a 9-3 record in the ACC, Leonard Yellen's squad sits just one game back of first place in the conference. One of those first place teams is NC State. The Wolfpack and the Orange will clash tonight down in Raleigh. NC State started a perfect 8-0 in the ACC, but has split its last four matches. Syracuse is coming in as winners of three straight. Anastasia Gorelina has led the offense with 45 total kills in that time span. The action gets underway at 7 o'clock. For Syracuse women's ice hockey, the tough non-conference schedule continues on Saturday. The Orange welcomes the second-ranked Boston College Eagles to the Tennedy Ice Pavilion. The Eagles are 6-0-1, while SU has stumbled out of the block at 1-6-1. The underclassmen have been a bright spot, however. Sophomore Kelly Rosewell and freshman Victoria Klemek each have a team-high four points on the year. Puck drop is set for 3 p.m. 
Dino Babers and company are down south, but there will be football in the Carrier Dome this weekend. Five Section 3 championships will take place on Friday and Saturday night. Tonight in the Class D final, Dolgeville is already underway against Bishop Ludden, and it's Bishop Ludden up 22 to 14 at the half. And then in the nightcap, the Class A final, it's an all-Warriors matchup as Whiteboro, Whitesboro takes on top-seeded Indian River at 8 p.m. Sticking to the ice, the Syracuse Crunch remain up north for a showdown with the Laval Rocket without the S. The Montreal Canadiens affiliate was known this past two years as the St. John's Ice Caps. It was the team the Crunch defeated to win last year's season's North Division semifinal. The Rocket is 5-4-2-0 and oh, in its inaugural season and in sixth place in the North. The Crunch, with just three wins on the year, sits in eighth. The two teams will face off at 7:30. And Major Arena Soccer League action kicks off tonight for the Syracuse Silver Knights as the team traveled to Northern California for its season opener against the Turlock Express. It is the first time that the Silver Knights have traveled to the Golden Coast in its seventh season of existence. The team is looking to bounce back from an 8-12 and 12 record last season that saw them miss the playoffs for the first time since 2013. The match is set for 10.05 Eastern Time. Okay, Nick, how is it looking for SU football to get to a bowl game this year? Syracuse with four games left on their schedule down in Florida State, but I think the big matchup for the Orange left on their schedule is going to be that Boston College game, the last game mm -hmm. of the season. They won 35-3 to against Florida State last week, a thumping. And it's, that defense is good, and it's going to be the Orange offense against that Boston College defense down there to get that win. And if they can win over Boston College, I think they win over Wake Forest, and they do get to a bowl game this oh, year. That sounds good. All right, thank you so much. Citrus TV News will be right back. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow. No. Snow-covered trees. Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Coming up on OTN, your full sports report on Q's Countdown and your late, late night entertainment with Syracuse Unpeeled. A new device is revealing the colors of fall to those who are colorblind. Colorblindness affects millions of Americans, so the Tennessee Department of Tourism launched the Colorblindless Viewfinders. The state installed the viewfinders at popular tourist spots in the state. That way those with red-green color deficiencies can get a glimpse of the fall leaves. You know, as somebody with a little bit of colorblindness himself, I'm hoping, you know, maybe they'll help us out in the future. Who knows? That's all we have for you tonight. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check us out on Twitter at Citrus TV News. And find out details on these stories and more at CitrusTV.com. I'm Rebecca Castor. And I'm Josh Rosenblatt. Have a great night, Syracuse.